Hi, today we will talk about virtual reality and augmented reality in education. And I will focus on two aspects specifically. One is virtual reality simulation based learning, the ability to learn faster, remember longer, make better decisions. And two, augmented reality based knowledge injection, the contextual real time geolocation based knowledge transfer. Um, I will start first with a brief uh, video, though, uh, to set the tone. Education is the base for a thriving society. That is why today still, knowledge transfer is a priority. It has been proven that virtual reality-based learning increases learners' attention level by 100% and improves test scores by over 30%. Virtual reality allows you to learn faster, remember longer, and decide better. Decide better. Now, you've all seen virtual reality, I guess, in one form or the other. But I bet that most of you have seen uh, headsets or they've seen maybe AR glasses. In uh, reality, this technology is used in many different ways. Uh, we are publishing to perhaps 30 different formats, from desktop formats to holographic screens to interactive uh, systems where you use your hands to interactive mirrors like the one you see here uh, to various types of mobile systems from uh, traditional tablets to mobile phones, etc. Um, and we focus uh, to address certain knowledge uh, transfer problems. There is three problems that we have identified that uh, key problems that we'd like to address. One is the quantity problem. Um, how do we teach more with less, less time and less money? The quality problem, uh, we have to change education. Memorizing facts is no longer necessary because Google does that best. So we need to teach things that uh, require uh, the ability to apply, analyze, evaluate, and create to teach critical thinking, problem solving, and in enhance curiosity and imagination. But we also need to address the attention problem. Uh, today, there's a ruthless competition for students' attention. There's many distractions uh, uh, that you know compete for students' attention. So how do we do that? Uh, we focus on using the ability that VR and AR has to enable learning by doing. The ability to build, seek, find, construct, assemble, reconstruct, diagnose, assess, uh, very much like you do in an aircraft simulator today. And we do so by applying four uh, principles. We call them the four P, uh, which are core for our vision. First one is purpose. We believe uh, that knowledge is a human right, and we do want to make knowledge available, accessible, and affordable for everybody on the planet. And here's a simple example how we can do that today. Everything you see here is a real application, uh, except for one little detail is the glasses. The glasses um, are not specifi specified because we work with all the partners from, uh, from uh, Microsoft to Google, etc. But what you see here is the ability to interact in a classroom or if you're away from the classroom, uh, the ability to collaborate in a multi-user environment um, or the ability to have a teacher as a mentor. You see in this example that <clears throat> uh, kids are trying to learn how to assemble a diesel engine or repair it, and the teacher is in another location and is able to advise step by step what to do. Um, the other aspect of this is also to empower teachers. Uh, most teachers today will not be able to program a traditional game engine to create a virtual reality experience, but using tools that we developed, they're actually able to create a home lesson based on building blocks that exist in a library of perhaps 8,000 different libraries uh, and add the, the, the right interaction and be able to assess that homework. 
<clears throat> and this is something we are doing and demonstrating here at this conference uh, this week. Um, the, the third P, which I believe is very important, is uh, the, uh, the, the second one, sorry, is people. Uh, still today, for more advanced application, we need to have virtual reality experts. So we need to build uh, expertise in developing content. We have set up uh, around the globe for that purpose more than 22 interactive digital centers. And these centers uh, teach up to 100 students per location how to use virtual reality and augmented reality, as well as constitute factories uh, for building and encapsulating knowledge around the globe. But to deploy it we, and to really make knowledge available, accessible and affordable, uh, we also need to find cost-efficient ways to disseminate it. So we have constituted a new program that we call the Knowledge Beat program. This is done and was announced at United Nations, which enables people in townships, uh, like you see here, to have access to the library for the cost of a can of Coke. Uh, the beauty of that is the can of Coke in South Africa or Ethiopia costs 27 cents, while the same can of Coke uh, in here in Orlando maybe is $2.70. We have, we have adapted it based on income. And uh, we've also set assigned uh, centers uh, to develop the content localized. For example, this is our center in South Africa, where we have 100 students uh, developing content. They come from the townships and they develop content for the local uh, environment, local South Africa environment. And this is a collaboration that we have between ourselves and uh, City of Svane, or City of Pretoria. Finally, we do also need uh, products, and the products consist of a number of things. Uh, you have a library that you're able to download and have lessons in, in various areas. Um, you can look for whether it's e easy to use or, or a little more my advanced. I take, for example, uh, a frog. You can dissect a frog. You can learn about a frog's annotation. You can go on a guided tour about this specific frog. And you can seamlessly switch between augmented reality and virtual reality, uh, like you see here. But we go a step further. We enable and empower uh, teachers also to create lessons. Uh, you see that here. So, for example, if you take a model of an ear, anatomy, you can add annotations. You are able to uh, also inject your YouTube video in the virtual reality application, uh, as well as create interaction without programming by drag and dropping components that then are automatically applied to that model, which you then can publish and, and provide home lessons and assess the students. Um, let me share with you a few concrete educational customer use cases. These are uh, of how this is used. So uh, among our customer education, we have high-end uh, educational institutions like Imperial College, Purdue, uh, ETH in Switzerland, uh, Canel, uh, Carnegie Mellon, etc. But we also work with colleges and recently a lot with K-12 around the globe. So an example of that is an AR primary school application for science that we've done uh, for kids, or a public transportation VR app for special needs students in Singapore, or an immersive uh, history lesson of uh, a Cantonese province in China, or as you see here, an AR application for anatomy studies in Australia. We also have developed a VR application for primary school students for flooding emergencies as well as AR engine operation application in Ethiopia with, uh, with UNID or United Nations. So, in summary, what we see is that virtual reality can help quite a lot by doing this simulation-based learning. But as this technology evolves, we believe that augmented reality will be even a more powerful transformational technology to provide these knowledge injections. And what happens today is that this technology don't, doesn't stand alone. Uh, IoT, Internet of Things, and sensors, there's going to be about 50 billion of these sensors available uh, in, in our world in the next uh, five years. Um, cloud computing that is growing, and machine learning, 
that is progressing on a daily basis. These technology enable computers uh, to act and make decisions at light speed. Um, we, however, as humans, are somehow left behind because we still have to communicate with them using predominantly uh, our thumbs. So we see a future, and a near future, we actually work that vision at the moment, where these technologies are then utilized in such a way that it brings the illuminated world with knowledge, where knowledge can be injected and information can be transferred to knowledge by making it contextual, structured, and relevant. Um, and also making it uh, multi-sensory. Uh, what I mean by multi-sensory is that it's visual, it's auditory, and so on. Um, just to share in, in the end here a few simple examples. This is an example how uh, augmented reality helps a fire worker to guide uh, guide them through uh, through an exit procedure or a construction company that is able to design the office and view it as well as make instruction of new installations uh, that and outlets that need to be provided where the worker gets the information at the workplace when they need it as they need it um, or an oil and gas uh, worker that has likewise the ability to uh, make corrections and see things, uh, see through pipes uh, and uh, may mitigate uh, some maintenance repair operation issues. Uh, and finally, we do see this in medical uh, where you are able to experience things uh, and gain knowledge about in, in a much more tangible and visual way that you are able to do today. So. I think the future is bright, and I think it is this future that we need to prepare uh, students for. And what better way to do it than using virtual reality and augmented reality today in the classroom. But to do this journey, uh, we can't be alone. We need to work with academic institution because you are possessing the knowledge. And we need to work together to encapsulate this and provide it. because. While technology goes very fast uh, and follows Moore's law, so computer, AR, VR devices will become faster, cheaper, better. We still need people that are able to have the sigma matter expertise and encapsulate that knowledge. Thank you so much.